On the outskirts of Accra, Ghana's capital is a unique ultramoding building the size of a football pitch, which is proving to be one of the most significant responses to the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic and infectious diseases in general. Ghana Infectious Disease Center. The idea was to do something really quick and fast. Um, mind you, this just started in the lockdown period. Uh, that was when there was lockdown everywhere and then uh, getting materials here and there was a problem. We are not in normal times and when you have abnormal times, you sometimes have to come up with innovative ways to really respond appropriately. A good number of us felt it was time for us to really step up and help the state and the entire citizenry battle this particular challenge, which was the COVID-19 pandemic. So we rose up to it. We decided to go for a system based on phases of reaction. We couldn't wait for this conventional construction process to be able to get our building of this scale. So the technology to use had to be technology which was fast and technology which had a good degree of flexibility. Flexibility because um, design was ongoing whilst construction was ongoing. So what we are using here, we use the air, which you can see, but it's actually a covered now. It's called an EPS system. Off the Spintex Road, a truck from CST Africa is loading the EPS panels. Soon, the truck is on its way to the building site. The EPS system has a model of one meter by three meter height, just like plywood boards. Now you put this up and then it moves faster. Unlike block like that, you have to do four cores at a time, let it dry before you put another one. These ones gave us speed with time because you can actually build a whole room within a day. The small group can put up a whole wall like this in a few minutes. Little excavation, do the edge beams, raft designed by the engineer, then on it stands with this expandable polystyrene. Tie them here and there. After that, you do short critting. You mix a, a bit of a cement slurry and add um, fiber mesh to it to give you that plastering effect. Block and mortar could have built this, but uh, arguably it would have built it at a much slower pace and it would have been appropriate for the kind of speed that we required. A very refreshing alternative to deal with projects of this nature. One of the fastest to come up within two to three weeks and then after that, we put in the, the tie beams and then the roof system and also the ceiling started coming in now. A 100 bed facility built in record time using innovative technology and at a fraction of the cost for similar sized buildings on the construction market. The streets of Accra are empty. It is March 2020 and the government has declared a partial lockdown to curb the spread of the coronavirus. We started when there was a lockdown. Very little moved across town. There was this difficulty of movement of personnel. But there was an important exception. We took up that tax, we provided buses and security, and we ensured that we got all workers to and fro from the site. We also did the overall coordination of the contractor, the subcontractors, suppliers, to make sure everything runs uh, smoothly. As a matter of fact, without the army, it would, have been, it would have been very difficult in the early stages because let's remember it was during lockdown and the army helped in getting our security passes, all of us to be able to move around. They had to pick some of the men from particular locations. So they helped mobilize very quickly. And finally, we provided physical security at the site. The project was funded by the COVID-19 Private Sector Fund. Mr. Senor Hossi explains. We are a fund made up of various uh, 11 trustees and everybody played a role and also have fund administrators who are also key actors in the entire operation. It really started with just a text, a, a, a WhatsApp conversation between uh, myself and Mr. Otinjisi and then 
um, a phone call with um, a DFA who was also trying to reach me for us to have a chat over the same thing. Mr. Edward Afa and Mr. Kweku Bediako, also trustees of the fund, give further insight into the successful funding of the project. I think we had our first COVID case on the 13th of March. Um, and then the numbers started going up and then we thought, let's do something. So we then brought in other friends and associates. I think it was important that the people would be one, interested in what we're doing, and two, that they can also contribute significantly. Everybody committed to making a 100,000 CD personal donation and their companies donating 1 million CDs, which we did. We thought it would be important to increase the bed capacity um, for the country. One thing I must mention about this project is the beauty of the Ghanaian participation. 100% Ghanaian consultants. Our air conditioning system, sophisticated and uh, complicated as it is, Ghanaian, our walls, EPS panels from CST, and these are produced right here in Ghana. We costed it, and I think initially we came about $4 million. Um, and we thought it was feasible because we probably at the time had nearly half the money available. We need to recognize also that some of the things here were not charged for, you know, like the professional services and a few other things. When you put it all together, it bumps it up a little, but people still find it very, very competitive. And then one thing led to the other. We appointed contractors, we uh, appointed teams, um, different teams for construction, for marketing, for different aspects of the building. Um, so there was a permanent team on the site after the commissioning. We were very determined to ensure from the onset that it would be very transparent. So we put together structures to assure anybody donating money that um, you have nothing to worry about. So we appointed Ernst and Young as the auditors from the beginning. We appointed a fund administrator, Stan Big Bank Ghana with his fund administrators. We appointed Fidelity Bank and Echo Bank as the fund banks, several technical partners, legal advisors, and all the rest of it. So all that was on the website. In the difficult times during the COVID, most foreigners were flying out into their own countries to go and give the assistance they can, and it was left with us. So if we didn't have people who could take their leadership, who could, who could, who were in a position also to, to do this, it would have been a bit more difficult for some of the people who needed the help the most. The project brought together a remarkable team of Ghanaian professionals from the built environment. The engineers of this country. They brought experience. Surveyors of this country. Very passionate. Planners of this country. And they did all this for free. You meet so many people on, on site, have about 350 people working. And then you have support personnel. So for instance, for the supervisors, my team, my project management team is about 100. All coming together with different ideas, coming together under one umbrella. The work schedule was on 24-hour rotation because speed was of the essence. In the evenings, one shift will be leaving for home, another shift will be coming in. Or well, let me put it around the clock. All of those different groups of people have become close friends because they, they were having to work day and night. And at the end of the day, your, 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 your relationship is very different from just, it's not like an acquaintance anymore. The end result is beautiful. Off the Spintex Road, we met Mr. Joy Champong, the owner of this factory, who earned deserved praise for going the extra mile to make his product available. GST were one of our major vendors. They provided us with the EPS walls because it enabled us to solve both our, our solid wall requirements and our insulation requirements at the same time. They came up to us and uh, we readily delivered. There was supposed to also be lockdown. We called on Mr. Achampong. He organized his team during the lockdown period to go and work 24 hours producing just for this project. It takes a Ghanaian who is committed and identifies with the agency of the time as a, as a, as a true citizen to be able to bend his back and commit the way CST did. 
and we really appreciate the services they delivered to this project. As a company, I cannot have a better opportunity to be, to be heard and to be seen than in an emergency situation like this and delivering for the benefit of the people that require the service. We started with an architectural concept. We developed it and along the lines, when we had enough information, we went straight to site to deliver it. Sooner than later, the structural foundation for the facility has been laid. On site, construction is brisk and there is intense activity. The architectural design took into consideration some of the experiences from other countries. Many countries had a big problem with the health workers being infected. We have the facility divided into zones. So we have a green zone and we have a red zone. So the red zone is actually where the patient comes in. The person will be held in the patient area, receive area. These are have control doors, sensor doors, that contains any infection that the person might have. In this area, we have wards on left and right of it. Each ward contains or can take six people or more. We move in a one-directional aspect. You can go back and forth. So you enter through this, we are discharged through what we call the green corridor. There's a nursing station here. Um, it's actually the hub of the facility. All um, controls are done from here. Admission of all the wards here is done from this nursing station. We have all intelligence systems coming into plugs behind them and under where they can respond to any uh, client call for any support for any patient here. So this is the six bed ICU unit. Um, you can see around us here that there are three beds to either side of it. And then this contains the specific systems for the ICU. You have the bedded units that bring in oxygen and medical air as well. These are electronic beds. They are hooked onto the main systems there. Behind us, you see the curtains up there, the grills, the lighting systems. The idea is for us to have a six bed, smaller unit. Your ward is a form of confinement for treatment. But uh, an interesting aspect of this design was the introduction of green areas, which you may have noticed. You look out and you see a garden. That is life and that really helps. Only contact with nature and God is through looking through the window. You have a chance to go into a garden which is controlled and uh, then uh, you can, which was supposed to help your recovery uh, psychologically. Is this unique facility going to be replicated elsewhere in the country? That is the question on everybody's lips as the good news spreads and Ghana celebrates a modest but hugely significant step in its fight against COVID-19. We are discussing with the Ministry of Health um, our second project in Kumasi because Kumasi has limited um, bed capacity and intensive care units capacity and um, as you may know I think more than half of all the fatalities in Ghana are from Ashanti region. And then I think we would go to Takradi and then Tamale. You know, basically it's, the idea is just to take these facilities closer to the people. It's been an experience, quite a thing that I'm really proud of and um, I couldn't have put it off without my team and then without the support of everyone, um, the whole Ghana as, as well, the whole world actually looking after this project. When we put our heads together and focus on one thing, we are able to do it, you know, and we should continue to, to do that. And they said, okay, this is the proposed site. And now I don't only, I, it's not just a proposed site, but I see a construction, I see a building, I see a building that can take patients. And it gives me some joy as a professional and that the work didn't just remain on paper. It actually materialized and all Ghanaians are going to benefit from it. We need to work together um, as Ghanaians and focus on um, a meritocracy. Um, we work with the best, we selected the best. Those of us who are also in business need to make sure that our businesses are able to survive, you know, to provide um, this sort of assistance when they need you know, rises. We are all proud with the products, us as Ghanaians. There are lots of lessons to be learned. This work was quite unique and it was to, it was to help the people of Ghana. So it was a calling that touched everyone.